Theodore Roosevelt was once quoted saying, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. Hi, I'm Nathan Blackwell, Mayor of St. Cloud, Florida. And I'm Paula Stark, Executive Director of St. Cloud Main Street. Here in the small town of St. Cloud, we are surrounded by such a rich and vibrant past. Founded in 1909, the Soldier City is no stranger to significant history. We are standing in front of our beloved band show in Veterans Park, an example of our welcoming and revered attitude towards our veterans. With a casual walk through our downtown historic district, you'll be entrenched in our city's rich past featuring 17 murals and three nationally recognized landmarks, all located within the historic district established in 2017. In fact, over the past 21 years, St. Cloud's Main Street program has worked to add historical markers to over seven locations throughout our small town. That's seven pieces of history forever immortalized. Main Street has gathered us together to celebrate these very special landmarks featuring Mount Peace Cemetery, Fisk Funeral Home, Heritage Museum, the Women's Club, and Coble's Garage Mural. Drawn by promotions from Northern newspapers in 1909, Union Civil War veterans from all over the United States began to move to St. Cloud whose ages ranged from 67 to 82. Some lived for many years and others succumbed within a short period of time. The first, a 10-acre tract east of the city, was deeded by the Seminole Land and Investment Company to the Mount Peace Cemetery Association in 1911. It is not known where the burials took place prior to that time and if any records were kept of the deaths. Our first stop is our historic Mount Peace Cemetery. Mount Peace Cemetery is the final home to veterans from many conflicts. Veterans who survived World War I and II, the Korean and Vietnam War, Pearl Harbor, and the 427 Civil War veterans who ultimately founded our city. My name is Gabriel Almonte. I'm with the city of St. Cloud. With me today are members of the Lucius Mitchell camp, sons of the Union veterans who forefathers founded our great city. Mount Peace is now owned and operated by the City of St. Cloud's Parks and Recreation Department. It is the only cemetery in the city. It is a vital part of our past, present, and of course, future. It is filled with all the history our community has to offer, from our Civil War veterans who were originally interred here, and many other veterans who have fought in multiple wars over the years to further exemplify our nickname, Soldier City. The marker is the proof of the cemetery's official standing as a historic site. It is now representing for all the significance of our beginnings for future generations so that our past will not be lost. At this time, we would like to unveil our state marker commemorating this site and all of us, those before us. Welcome Ron McCracken, Mike Ural with the Sons of Union veterans who will now unveil our state historic marker for all to enjoy. Beginning in 1909, Union Civil War veterans all over the United States began to move to St. Cloud, many drawn by promotions in northern newspapers. The first veterans to die in St. Cloud, Lucius L. Mitchell, passed away in December 1909. And because there was no veteran cemetery in St. Cloud, he was interred in nearby Kissimmee. To remedy this, the local chapter of the Union Veterans Group, the Grand Army of the Republic, GAR, helped establish a cemetery named Mount Peace for Union Veterans. The Seminole Land and Investment Company deeded 10 acres track to the Mount Peace Cemetery Association, which began selling pots. Union Veterans were buried here from 1910 to 1942, totaling 427 burials. Among them are three American soldiers who served in the United States Colored Troops, 15 documented survivors of the Andersonville prison, and one Medal of Honor recipient. Two Confederates, one of whom served for both armies, are buried here. Later, veterans of other more recent conflicts were buried in Mount Peace. Lucius Mitchell's remains were relocated to Mount Peace years after the cemetery opened. The local Sons of Union Veterans Camp was named the Lucis L. Mitchell Camp in his honor. 
Known as the Soldier City, St. Cloud had the largest concentration of Union Army veterans in the South. The first Union veteran buried in Mount Peace was Oren B. King on February 4, 1910. And the last was William C. Russell, who died August 12, 1942. Since the cemetery opened, nearly 1,000 additional veterans of later conflicts have been buried in Mount Peace. These burials include two from the Plains Indian Wars, 286 from the Spanish-American War, 163 from World War I, 246 from World War II, 52 from the Korean War, 36 from the Vietnam War, one from the Gulf War, and 116 who served in peacetime. The first World War I veteran buried in Mount Peace was Walter Koch, who died in France, and the last was Dan Armstrong, who died just short of his 105th birthday. World War I veteran Edwin Young served in the 31st Infantry Polar Bear Regiment. World War I Army Nurse Corps First Lieutenant Jessie Teague was one of the few women to receive full veteran benefits. John Hickson, a World War II prisoner of war, POW of Japan, endured the Bataan Death March. Wayne Horner was a World War II POW held at Germany's Stalag 4B Muehlberg Sachsen. World War II veteran James Buckner survived the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. With death, comes the need for a funeral home. One was established and is still one of the leading funeral homes in Osceola County. This landmark can be easily identified by its particular Spanish floral style. It was owned and operated by C.E. Carlson. The original location was the Myler Building on Massachusetts Avenue. In 1950, it was relocated to the Cooper Building on Massachusetts Avenue where they added a chapel and a selection room designed in 1925 by female architects Isabel Roberts and Ida Ryan. The Fisk Funeral Home is no stranger to history in St. Cloud. Serving as the unofficial historian for St. Cloud, the funeral home was named solely for Bob Fisk. In 1983, Bob's son, Bill, became the sole owner of the company and later sold it. My name is Bill Fisk. I'm the son of Bob Fisk, former owner and namesake of Fisk Funeral Home. Part of our current funeral home dates back to 1908, where it served as a doctor's office and hospital for Dr. S.C. Cooper. Our family history begins in 1919, when our great uncle purchased what was at that time Carlson Funeral Home. This location has provided funeral service to the community since 1915. The Fisk Building has a two-story section that still stands today. That part of the building was one of the first brick buildings in the city of St. Cloud. Across the street where the parking lot now stands is where Dad's great uncle and aunt had their home. When the funeral home was remodeled and expanded to its present size, the lot was converted into parking. Dad grew up in Winter Park, spent his vacations and summer breaks in St. Cloud working at the funeral home. When World War II started, he enlisted in the Navy where his funeral home experience got him assigned to medic and pharmacy duties. After the war, he made a quick stop in Virginia to marry my mother and they set up home in St. Cloud. My mother, while she was still alive, tried to figure out how many times my dad took a vacation in the time from 1945 until his death in 2011. We could only come up with eight times that he left town for more than a week. He loved history and the history of St. Cloud and his residence was near and dear to his heart. Dad would have loved to have been around when this marker was put up. He was known to stop along highways and read the markers, and often said, wish they would do more of this. I would like to introduce Ron McCracken and Michael Urell with the Sons of Union Veterans to unveil our piece of history. In 1915, licensed embalmer Carl E. Carlson opened his undertaking establishment, rental building on Massachusetts Avenue and 11th Street. In 1918, he purchased the building belonging to St. Cloud's first physician, Dr. C.S. Cooper, next to the Grand Army of the Republic building on Massachusetts Avenue. Carlson remodeled it in a then state-of-the-art undertaking establishment 
and a November the 14th, 1918 newspaper ad for Carlson and Newton funeral directors and embalmers indicated a new partner, John Newton. He departed the next year and was replaced by George Barber, one of the original Union Army veterans who settled in St. Cloud. Dana Eiselstein and his brother, William, partnered in 1919 to purchase the Carlson Funeral Home. Barber, a city councilman at that time, remained with the new firm, renamed the Eiselstein Brothers. In 1925, the firm hired architects Isabel Roberts, an associate of Floyd, Frank Lloyd and Wright and Ida Anna Ryan, to design a new chapel. The building's exterior was remodeled and given a pseudo Spanish style stucco finish the first all-female architectural firm in Orlando, Ryan and Roberts designed many other buildings in St. Cloud in what was to become a local style Spaniflora. In 1928, William Eiselstein married Susie Fisk. Her nephew, Robert A. Bob Fisk, graduated from Cincinnati College of Embalming in 1942 and then served during World War II with the U.S. Naval Hospital Corps. In 1949, Bob Fisk became the funeral director for the Eiselstein's funeral home. In June that same year, Dana Eiselstein died suddenly. William passed in 1951, and Bob became the funeral home's manager. In 1958, William C. Jordigan purchased interest in the business from Dana's wife, Louise Eiselstein. And the name was changed to the Eiselstein, Fisk, and Jornigan Funeral Home. After Susie Eiselstein's death in 1964, the name changed again to Fisk and Jornigan. In 1972, the old chapel was converted into office space, and the exterior was given a colonial red brick finish. Bob's son, Bill Fisk, joined as funeral director in the 1970s. Bob Fisk became the sole owner of the company, renamed Fisk Funeral Home in 1983. Bob served as an unofficial local historian for St. Cloud and co-authored the 2002 book, Images of St. Cloud. For most of the 20th century, Fisk Funeral Home was the only funeral home operating in St. Cloud. I want to thank everybody for coming today. This little piece of history for St. Cloud added to the others gives a more complete history of our town and will provide for future times for people to understand where this town has come from. Established in 1999, St. Cloud Main Street started with a vision to promote a sense of community pride and to create a world-class community where traditions and new ideas unite. Their mission was economic development with historic preservation as the focus. Historic preservation is embodied throughout the downtown corridor and St. Cloud Main Street's footprint. Main Street with the city is proud to promote the preservation initiative with the Historic Preservation Board to save as much of our history and historical resources as possible. It is important for us to remember and recognize those individuals and buildings that make us who we are today and celebrate our unique strengths, which brings us to our next location, which along with the Grand Army of the Republic Hall, located on the corner of 11th and Massachusetts, and the train depot, the VFW, at New York and Ninth are the three buildings listed on the National Register of Historic Places. These embody the essence of those who establish organizations and the very beginnings of our community and culture. The Ladies Improvement Club was formed in 1910 for the betterment of the community, and in 1916, the Ladies Club secured the land to start construction on this building. My name is Olive Horning, curator of the Heritage Museum and president of the St. Cloud Women's Club. The objectives of the Women's Club include community improvement and literacy. These objectives are as true today as they were in 1910. 
The women wanted sidewalks so their skirts wouldn't get dirty. They also purchased park benches to be placed at the lakefront and around town. The club purchased the mule yard and gave it to the city for Veterans Memorial Park. Concerning literacy, the club established reading areas in the train depot and hotels. The women really wanted a library building, so they began holding lantern shows and ice cream socials to raise money. Alas, in 1917, the National Bank failed and the club lost 60% of its money. This delayed construction of the Veterans Memorial Library until 1922. This place is important because it was partially built by funds which came from the members of the Grand Army of the Republic posts throughout the states. It was important to the town for the educational and recreational services it provided to children and adults. It has housed the St. Cloud Heritage Museum since 2005. Many visitors come to learn about the unique history of the town and to inquire about relatives who lived here. The Women's Club Auditorium was built in 1949 and could hold 400 people for concerts, plays, and speaker series sponsored by the club. It is meaningful to know that these buildings join other properties that are deemed worthy to be preserved because of their historic nature. The buildings join two others in St. Cloud that are on the National Register. The most interesting fact about the Veterans Memorial Library is that it was designed by two foremost women architects, Isabel Roberts and Ida Anna Ryan. How did they learn about Little St. Cloud? Isabel's aunt and uncle lived in St. Cloud and her aunt was a member of the Women's Club. Her uncle was on the building committee and recommended that the club interview them. This was the first building that they designed in St. Cloud and they said it was their finest work. With me for unveiling this historic plaque is Marvin Robinson, Vice President of the Women's Club and City Manager Bill Sturgeon. We look forward to additional visitors to the museum and other historically recognized places in our town to continue with us in celebrating our history. As previously mentioned, residing throughout downtown St. Cloud are the city's many historic murals. Murals that depict the Great Fire of 1917, war heroes of the past and present, an historic fire department, and so much more. There are currently 17 murals within the St. Cloud Main Street program. Earning a spot on the Florida Mural Trail, located on the Visit Florida website, St. Cloud Main Street worked with local artists to preserve history all along the brick paved roads of the historic district. Handyman hardware into itself is a St. Cloud icon, but now it has an additional adornment, the Cobbles Garage mural of which was the original use for this building. Jules Ross is the local artist who painted the, the Cobbles mural. Handyman Hardware is already a St. Cloud icon, but now it has a new adornment, the Cobles Garage mural. Built in 1914, this was the original use of the building. I'm Jules Ross, and I'm the artist who got to paint this mural for St. Cloud Main Street. In 1914, Harry Coble built this building and worked and lived here with his family for 40 years. Family owned and operated, Handyman Hardware has been here since 1986. As an artist, one of the funnest things that I get to do with the historic murals is learn about our history. And for this mural, not only did I get to research more about the building and what was here, but also add a little character. Lawrence Silas is the character that I chose to put on the mural along with the family members that owned the building. He was a local rancher and a local legend. If you get an opportunity, look him up. And now that you know a little bit about Coble's Garage, we'd like to introduce Tom Dorsey and Rick Hoser to unveil our special plaque telling the story of Coble's Garage. Built in 1914, the 50-foot by 100-foot structure was the longest single floor space in the city at that time. The gas pump was on the edge of the road leaving your car on the road as you filled the tank. We'd like to say a special thank you to St. Cloud Rotary for helping to fund this project, as well as restoring some of our other local murals. 
If you're not aware, the local mural program in St. Cloud is sponsored by St. Cloud Main Street and it is a very important part of our history in maintaining it. St. Cloud Main Street has an entire walking tour based on our murals and historic buildings. You can pick up the brochure at our office to do a self-guided tour, or you can download the app at our website, www.stcloudmainstreet.org. Our colorful past is forever engraved in our small town, and we must protect and preserve our slice of history. St. Cloud Main Street's historic preservation initiative with the city government and staff has generated the mechanism to maintain the integrity and the history on behalf of their sponsors, supporters, and citizens. Protecting the stories handed down from generation to generation and honoring those places of historical significance is our duty. St. Cloud is a special place, one with a rich celebrated history. On behalf of the staff and the volunteers of St. Cloud Main Street and the city of St. Cloud, thank you for your support and thank you for joining us.